Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We are Muslim because the world around us forces us to believe that there must be a creator. The most logical religion among all is Islam, which has a miraculous and unaltered book of God, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has informed us that the sole purpose of our creation is nothing but to worship Him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I created the jinn and mankind only so that they might worship me. Surah ad dariyat Ayat 56 So, the most common questions that might pop in our minds are How can we worship him full time without arranging for our living? How can we earn and take care of our families? Are we wasting our time from the actual purpose of life if we spend the most of our time in worldly affairs? The concept of worship in Islam is not just limited to prayer, fasting, hajj, zakah, reciting Quran, and zikr, etc. It actually includes all permissible righteous deeds. A particular deed may seem to be good, but not permissible by our Lord. For example, fasting is good, right? But it is not allowed on the eight days. So, the concept of following the permissibilities and restrictions in our activities and thought process always keeps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our minds and we remain in a constant state of worship full time thus fulfilling our purpose of life. Now let's start discussing it in more detail. Can't start without mentioning the following ayats. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and we sent not before you any messenger except that we reveal to him that there is no deity except me so worship me surah al anbiya ayat 25 we raised among every people a messenger who enjoined worship allah alone and keep away from the evil one surah an nahal ayat 25 people worship your lord who created you and those before you so that you may become righteous Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayat 21 The word worship encompasses much broader view. It includes all other explicit and implicit actions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and likes. For example, taking care and maintaining own family, being patient, being charitable, maintaining honesty, fulfilling trusts, being dutiful to parents, joining ties of relatives, promoting goodness, making tawbah, encouraging others to do good deeds and discouraging them from doing evil. Dealing with others proves that Islam discourages individualism. Surah Asr teaches us that we can't just follow the religion by our own but we have an obligation to convey it to the others. In addition to all of the above comes loving Allah and his messengers, fearing and being thankful to Allah for his infinite blessings, accepting his decree, depending on him, aspiring for his mercy and fearing his punishment. Most importantly, being conscious that we are all in fact returning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and believing on the day of resurrection. All of these are examples of act of worship to Allah. Thus, leading a life abide by the rules permissible by our Lord, trying to please him and abstaining from forbidden activities makes us in a state of constant worship to Allah which is the ultimate purpose of our creation and existence. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Say, my prayer, my sacrifice, my life, and my death, all are for Allah, the Lord of the worlds. Surah al anam Ayat 162 This way, Islam bestows the quality of worship on any action that seeks the satisfaction of Allah and which are not forbidden. Hence, the farmer, the manufacturer, the trader, the doctor, the engineer, the teacher, and the student, if their job role is permissible in Islam, they are all in a state of worship while performing their duties for gaining proper sustenance for their family. Thus, the worship can never take us away and separate us from the aspects of our life and the duties towards our family, relatives, and neighbors. Righteousness is not that you turn your faces towards the east or the west, but true righteous is one who believes in Allah, the last day, the angel, the book, the prophets, and gives wealth in spite of love for it, to relatives, orphans, the needy, the traveler, those who ask for help, 
and for freeing slaves who establishes prayer and gives zakah fulfill their promise when they promise and who are patient in poverty and hardship and during battle those are the ones who have been true and it is for those who are the righteous surah al-baqarah ayat 177 the ayat establishes that only prayer zikr zakah is not sufficient enough to be righteous in islam we have an obligation to take care of our social aspects as well two origins of worship worship has two origins not to worship anyone beside allah to worship according to the commands and laws of allah Islam never requested its followers to devote themselves full time for prayer and abandon a normal life. For example, in case of monasticism in Christianity, where the concept of worship isolates them completely abandoning the social life and normal lifestyle. As narrated by Sa'id bin Abi Waqqas, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "You will be rewarded for whatever you spend for Allah's sake, even if it were a bite of food." which you put in your wife's mouth sahih al bukhari book of belief hadith number 49 so we are in a state of worship when we strive for earning money to feed and take care of our own families anas reported muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam as saying never does a muslim plant trees or cultivate land and a man or a bird or a beast eat from it this is considered to be a charity on his behalf Sahih Muslim the book of Musaqqah hadith number 12 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made worship easy for us Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says God desires ease for you and does not desire hardship for you Surah Al-Baqarah ayat 185 God intends to lighten your burden for the human being was created weak Surah Al-Baqarah ayat 28 God does not burden any soul beyond its capacity. Surah Al-Baqarah ayat 286. So, with Islam, Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala actually eases our burden rather than imposing more difficulty. If anyone argues that he or she can't pray 5 times a day or can't keep fast being fit, well, the word of Allah proves that they are simply lying in telling so. Anas also narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said We must not make worship seem difficult to perform doing them cheerfully thus not discouraging other to follow the deen Sahih al-Bukhari good manners and form hadith number 152 The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam prohibited Abdullah ibn Amr from fasting daily it was recommended to him to have a break on fasting even if he could do so and pray and sleep properly so that the right of his family his body and property is not affected by his fasting muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said fast one day and break on the other day that is known as the fasting of daud alaihi wasallam and that is the best fasting abdullah ibn amr said i am capable of doing more than this thereupon the messenger of allah said there is nothing better than this we must not be too arrogant to abandon following our religious obligations your lord has said pray to me and i will respond to you but those who are too proud to worship me will enter hell forcibly surah ghafir ayat 60 so we are being taught for the first time that the wisdom behind worship is that the believer acknowledges his lord that he is his servant and that he obeys his orders but those who are too arrogant to worship allah will certainly enter hell fire the relationship between worship and behavior Quran and Sunnah suggests that worshiping Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala must have an impact on the manners and the behaviors of its followers. If one can sense and feel Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala's existence and realize the real purpose of our life, there must be an automatic change in his or her behavior, actions, and the way of thinking. Thank you. What is your opinion? Let us know in the comment section below and if you like this video, please hit the like button. and subscribe to this channel thanks